Hi everyone, it's Steve. I wanted to go through my um, my tool set, and I wanted to do that for um, a couple of reasons. Um, the first one is is for anybody who might be new starting out in the business as a telecom manager, or maybe even somebody who's working as a field technician. You know, I remember when I first got started, I had a lot of anxiety about owning the proper tools and how I was going to be able to afford them. And I have to say that after 25 years, um, I've pretty much slimmed down to what it is that's really essential. And so I th thought that by sharing that information, it might help save somebody some money, it might also help you prioritize your acquisitions. And also, if you are, if you are, you know, a telecom manager, um, you might be able to spot some of the key items that you're going to want to own to manage uh, a telecom system, you know, for, for a company or an enterprise. All right, well, the first thing that's on top is what's in slang referred to as the butt set, but is more properly called the lineman's test set. You know, there was a time when I would have said that this was a staple item for my toolkit, except that this is designed to work on analog lines, and I'm finding analog lines to becoming less and less common. So whereas it's probably still important to own one of these, I don't know that I'd run out and spend $250. I, I remember I bought this one. It's a Harris, which is top of the line. Uh, it's got speakerphone, and it's also supposed to be, um, uh, it's supposed to have an impedance that doesn't knock down DSL lines, although I can attest that I've knocked down plenty of DSL lines with this thing. Um, but anyway, whether you decide to get a butt set or not, if I was going to go out and buy a new one today, I'd probably just buy something like less than 80 bucks, and I don't know that if I'd opt for, for speakerphone, because it's just not that big a deal anymore. Now, something that is pretty much imperative for just about anybody in this business is what's known as a toner. A toner is a device that uh, comes with a couple of alligator clips like this, and then also um, an RJ11. And what this does is you plug this into a jack, or you can connect it to the wiring, you know, uh, tip and ring. And also, I, I keep a coupler with it because sometimes I have to couple to a uh, an RJ11 cord. What that does is it generates a signal. It makes a, a radio frequency signal that travels over the wire, and then you use something called a uh, test set. I'm sorry, um, a, a tone probe. And tone probes um, used to sometimes be called bananas, and the reason they used to be called bananas is because they, they used to be yellow. Pretty much all the ones you used to see used to be yellow. It comes with a little volume on the side. So here's how it works. So I plug this into the wall, it generates a signal, then I can go to the other end of where I suspect that wire is. And notice how I don't actually have to touch it. As you get closer to the wire, then you in fact, when you get right on the wire, it gets really loud. And that's how you know that you've identified the proper signal, I mean, a proper pair of wires. The second thing it does is it um, it has a continuity switch, which in the continuity position tells you if there's if there's well if there's a short on the line or if it's a if it's a complete circuit coming back to you. That's usually with telephone lines. That's not a good thing. And then lastly, in the neutral position, it does nothing except that if you do plug it into a hot line, um, the light will turn green or red, and that means that the, the circuit is active. All right, and there's more particulars around that, but I'm not going to get into it. But tone, a toner and a tone probe, I would consider to be my top five items that you have to have if you're going to be um, a field technician or telecom manager. All right, also another thing that you just can't live without if you're somebody who's, who's doing moves, adds, and changes is what's known as a punch-down tool. Now, the two most popular types of punch blades... That is this little, this little. It's, it's a blade that goes in the. It's like a chuck that goes in the end of the punch down tool. The two most popular are what they call 66 and 110. Okay, most of these when you buy them, they usually come with a 66 already in them, and then they've got a spot here in the back to buy an additional blade and store it back there because as a busy technician, you'll switch back and forth between 110 and 66 on a regular basis. Although it's kind of funny, as things have changed, I'm seeing a lot less 66 punch down connections and mainly just seeing a lot of 110 connections. So I would say, well, you need to own a 66 anyway, but 110 is pretty common now too. <clears throat> now, along the lines of punch-down tools, 66 and 110 are not the only game in town, and I carry this little, um, this little, I don't know what you call it, like a little plastic container where I keep really small things in my toolbox that I don't want to lose. And one of the things for the, my subscribers who are Nortel users, because this is, after all, the Nortel guys' channel, is this thing known as a Bix punch-down. 
okay? A Bix punch down, B-I-X, Bravo India X-Ray. A Bix tool is used in this punch down tool. And when Nortel was installing a lot of the systems, uh, especially the key systems, the, the, the Northstar series, they would use what was known as a, as a Bix punch down block. And that looked a little bit like a 110, but do not use a 110 on a Bix block because you will mess it up so it's not good so if you if you manage a north star system um, this might even be true for the uh, option series but I'm not positive if anybody knows please leave a comment but Bix tool is was used a lot in the Nortel environment and then also something you used to see a lot in the um, I mean I haven't worked all over the country but I've worked in the tri-state New England area and for some reason, whenever I was over in New York, hmm, maybe I don't have it, there was something known as a Crone Punch Down. K-R-O-N-E. I think I had that in my other toolbox. Sorry. Uh, Crone Punch Down, which was used a lot in, uh, in, the, in the New York Telephone Exchange, uh, NYMEX. Now it's called Verizon. So, so that's Punch Downs. Again, in my top five. Got to have Tone and Tone Probe. Got to have Punch Down. All right, another thing that I use a lot would be in my top five is a screwdriver. Now, you can go out and get about four or five different screwdrivers. I personally like these little inexpensive ones. You get these at Home Depot where it's, you know, it's a shaft that pulls out of the handle and it's got like a big blade. I mean, sorry, it's got a, a small uh, flat blade. It's got a small uh, Phillips. Flip it over to the other side. It's got, you know, bigger Phillips and a bigger flat blade. Now, here's what's cool I like about this. Two things. One is, is that when you remove the, the actual screw uh, driver bit, this also doubles as a um, one quarter inch nut driver. And I think that one's the next size up. I'm sorry, I can't remember. I think 5 sixteenths is the next size up. So that's really handy. The second thing it does that's really cool is that if you do a lot of work with a drill, is that I'll take the shaft by itself and put that in the drill chuck and use it as a drill uh, bit extension for a screw like a screw gun, okay? So you gotta have a screwdriver. Again, top five. I think by the time I'm done with this video, there'll probably be more than five of my top tools, but tone probe, punch down, uh, versatile screwdriver. And then another thing I use a lot is um, my crimp. Oh, wait, no, hold on. Since we're on top five, let's do this. Scissors. Now these are not just regular scissors. These are what are known as lineman scissors, okay? Alignment scissors, you get these, um, actually I've noticed you can get these now in the hardware stores, like in the United States, you can get them at Home Depot or Lowe's, but they're really heavy grade, um, they're designed specifically for dealing with low voltage wire, they've got a couple little notches on them right here for stripping back the, um, I don't know if you can see that, a couple little notches there for stripping back the, uh, the uh, 20 gauge, I mean the uh, 22 gauge copper wire that the telephones use. Okay. Again, top five. Are we up to five yet? Okay. Um, anyway, uh, this is a crimp tool. Now, this is a very high quality uh, crimp tool. This is this was made by a company named Amp, and there are other ones out there that you can get that are cheaper. I think I paid about sixty dollars for this about twenty five years ago. So I imagine it's it's probably I don't know maybe it's still sixty dollars. Anyway, what it does is it's got. It's got a spot here with a with an adjustable or an interchangeable little uh, key to crimp down an RJ45 connector, or you can take this little chuck, this little key out, and put in one for an RJ11. Okay, it makes very good, reliable crimps. Like I said, this isn't the only game in town. They make uh, they make less expensive ones. I personally don't trust those. I worry that the connection's not very good, and um, so so I use I use what's known as the amp crimp down tool um, with the interchangeable RJ45 and RJ um, keys in there. Alright, those are pretty much my most important things. Like if you took everything away from me and said you need to go get the basics to, to be back in the telecom business, I would say if I had punch down, you know, the tone probe and toner, the amp, you know, the connect the, and the scissors and the, and the screwdriver and the and the crimp tool, I'd probably be okay. But now here's some other things. And again, I've been doing this for 25 years, and I carry this little tool bag. When I first started out, I had this big, gigantic toolbox with everything in it. And eventually I began to realize over time that some things I was just lugging around for no reason. So I'm kind of passing this information on to 
whoever might benefit from it. All right, one of the things I do frequently use um, is a, uh, a multimeter. Um, you can get these very expensive, but you can also get these very inexpensive. This is a Craftsman. It's not the best, but it does the job. And I think it was like uh, 18 bucks, something like that. It wasn't very expensive. Um, great for when you're trying to, um, to, to check voltages on lines. Um, the other thing I do is I have a really small little socket set. All right, so that's all quarter-inch drive sockets, both metric and English. And that's because in this business, you invariably run into situations where you have to take out you know, big nuts or bolts. Um, I also have an adjustable wrench. Um, now, here's something I came up with that's kind of cute. Is I took a spool of, um, of electrical wire. It was, I'm sorry, electrical tape that came on a spool. And when it was empty... I took and I replaced it with jumper wire. Now, most of you who are in this business know that jumper wire usually comes in these big three or five, five pound um, spools that are about the size of a 45 record. Boy, am I dating myself here. Anyway, um, the what I did is I just made a small one out of an empty spool. You could use really any kind of spool, and I just wrapped a butt. And what's nice about this is there's enough on here that I can do several moves, adds, and changes with jumper wire, and it keeps me from having to lug around that big, gigantic... Uh, spool of uh, jump wire with me. Um, for those of you who don't know what jump wire is, jumper wire, it's, it's, it's this blue, white, white, blue wire. That's what's generally used on the backboard to connect from one piece of equipment to the cable that goes out to the endpoint. So you might connect from the PBX punch down block to the punch down block where the wire that goes to the phone or device um, is. So, and this you gets, this gets used all the time, so got to have that. Um, wire ties. Those are big ones. Little baggie of small wire ties. Here's another thing I came up with that's really helped save me a lot of time, is I, I got this little bitty tackle tray, and I filled it up with all kinds of little things that I would normally keep out on my vehicle, but the, what I eventually got tired of is walking back out to the vehicle every time I needed something little, or lugging all that stuff in with me to um, a premises. So I've got like a handful of bridge clips, I've got some Velcro, some RJ22s, 45s, uh, 11s, um, I've got some uh, rack mount screws, just the things I used to run into on a regular basis, just to save a little time. I had this little tackle box in my toolbox, big time saver. Electrical tape goes without saying. If you're going to do splices, you need to wrap them up with electrical tape. Um, a small level is good because, as you, uh, especially if you're in the inst installation business, if you're um, if you're mounting equipment on the wall, you'll want to know if it's straight. Here's another important one, although not necessarily a requirement for somebody starting out, but but eventually something you might want to have. And these are not terribly expensive. And this is what's known as a pair tester or continuity tester. So what this does is it it has RJ45s and an RJ well special RJ11 on there. We won't get into that. But what the RJ45 does, um, and you plug in here is that it's sending a signal out on all the pairs, and then when it comes back to the mate. What the lights will tell you is whether or not all the pairs are connected and if they're pinned out correctly. So, for instance, if there was a, uh, a reversal, you would see a combination of reds and greens. Or if you saw nothing, then that would mean that the pairs are not communicating all the way through, which probably means you've either got a problem in the cable, but most likely you've got a problem when you either made the jack or when you made the, uh, the RJ45 connector. Okay, that is something you use quite a bit. But if you're a beginner, you don't have to have that. But I would put that on your list of things to acquire sometime shortly. And then, of course, I keep a couple little patch cords for use with that um, in my toolbox. Okay. Let's see. A um, few other little odds and ends. Um, tape measure is always good to have, especially if you're in the installation business. Um, this is one that's kind of cute, too, is a little uh, magnetic... Um, telescoping uh, pen here that, you know, this is good when you drop screws down into little spots where you can't reach them with your hand. Um, let's see, also a mirror. Now the things I'm doing now are kind of more advanced. I wouldn't say you necessarily needed to have, you know, a collapsible mirror um, in the telecom business, but I can tell you this has been really handy sometimes when I'm trying to see what's going on, especially if I've cut a hole in a wall and then I'm trying to see why my cable won't come down the wall. I stick the mirror in there. It's pretty good. 
Flashlights. Gotta have a flashlight. Gots to have a flashlight. Sharpie and regular pen, okay? I can't tell you how annoying it is for us more advanced or seasoned uh, technicians to go in behind somebody who didn't label their stuff or didn't label it properly or tried to use a ballpoint pen on a 66 block. You need to have a Sharpie, okay? They're not that expensive. You can buy them in multi-packs. Always have a Sharpie on you. And I guess that's about it. You know, if I had to go back and sum it up, if I was a field technician just starting out, I would say the things you really, really, really should have is my top two by far, probably my top three, is toner and tone probe, punch down tool, scissors. Screwdriver's a must, but that's kind of like goes without saying. Analog lineman set, you know, it, analog lines are disappearing more and more every day. You can decide whether you want to get one of these. Um, could I get by in the field without this? Yeah, I probably could. Um, and then probably a good um, a good adjustable wrench would be good to have with you. And then um, and then uh, the, the the crimp tool. All the other stuff is kind of like extra, but but eventually at some point as you become a, a master technician, you're going to want to have all these things that I've just showed you. Also, for my viewers, please feel free to post comments if you are a seasoned technician and you want to share some things that you keep in your toolbox that make you more effective at what you do. So, uh, Steve the Nortel Guy signing off. Thank you so much for watching.